Hello, welcome to the Frosty Barcelona, and we are here at Qualcomm booth, and we have Rod with us, who heads the asset tracking and IoT division at Qualcomm. So he's going to talk to us about the newest launch, which Qualcomm has up its sleeves. Rod, over to you. Can you talk to me about the newest solution you have? Yeah, absolutely. We're really excited to launch the Qualcomm Aware platform here at MWC. Uh, you know, th this platform has been a long time in the making. You know, IoT has been a great growth area for, for Qualcomm over the years as we've expanded beyond mobile and compute. Um, but as we looked at the market, we noticed there's significant fragmentation in the market and a lot of complexity to just get a device to market. So how do people start on their digital transformation journey when they have to stitch together so many different elements, right? They've got to start with a chipset. They've got to get a mod or a module, right? They've got to find an ODM to build the product for them. And then they've got to build this entire solution and cloud layer on top of that to help them. So, so you know, when we looked at this, we said, you know, Qualcomm's in a very unique position. We have a huge technology portfolio. We spent over seventy billion dollars in research and development in our in our history, um, and you know, we also bring a huge scale. So we've sold hundreds of millions of, of chipsets into this market over the past few years. And, you know, we've been focused on a lot of the technologies that we're bringing to bear in the Qualcomm Aware platform, from location technology, power management, condition monitoring. So, you know, for us, it's the natural evolution of our business. Can you talk a lot more about uh, how the platform is? What are the elements and how it is going to help with scalability in terms of uh, overall use cases? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, when we step back and think about the Qualcomm Aware platform, you know, we think it's going to have applicability across all of our different verticals. So that could be in retail. It could be in energy and utilities. It could be in building and automation. Um, but, you know, we're, we know we also need to start somewhere. So we're starting actually in asset tracking. Um, and we've got these types of trackers, which are going to help, you know, people get to market quickly with the, with the platform. Um, and that's an area where we, we know really well. We sold 70 million chipsets yeah. into asset tracking devices last year. Um, and, you know, this is really just the start of the platform. Um, but, you know, it leverages, as I said, a lot of the things that we, we've built up. So location technology. You know, Qualcomm has a long history in GNSS, uh, assisted GNSS technologies, self-positioning. We've now brought together uh, with the acquisition of Skyhook, one of the leading Wi-Fi positioning platforms in, in the world. Um, so we're really able to deliver a seamless experience for folks that allow them to overcome that complexity and, and really start on the digital transformation journey. So creating a digital twin in the cloud that allows them to, to take real-time action to protect their assets, uh, to monitor their condition, but also to generate insights. And then from those insights, turn those into action to create more efficient uh, operations. So Qualcomm will be offering out-of-the-box connect connectivity for the data, location data coming out of from chip based on Qualcomm devices. Yeah, so it, it'll be, you know, there will, we will start with some of these devices, but we're not going to build every form factor sure. of device. But these devices will have out-of-box connectivity, yeah. global cellular connectivity uh, through roaming agreements. Yeah. Um, and, and so out-of-the-box, these devices will just work. Right, and, and you'll have access to the location platform, you'll have access to the cloud uh, to the cloud platform and the dashboard that allows you to consume that information. But really importantly, this is an API first architecture, right? We, we expect that a lot of our customers are actually going to consume a lot of the information that's generated by these trackers in um, you know, enterprise software systems like supply chain modules, or like a Microsoft Dynamics 365 platform, or through other cloud platforms right. that they already have access to. Um, you know, so, so what we're really doing is solving those lower layers and enabling both the customers as well as our partners uh, to generate value. So the top use case would be asset tracking for now? Yeah. Uh, which is the low hanging. Yeah, so, so we're starting with asset tracking, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. If we were to go on the other side of the demo, you know, you'd even see an energy and utilities demo. Okay. So for example, uh, pole tilt monitoring. You know, it's a huge issue for energy uh, and utility companies. When a pole starts to tilt, it can have di disastrous consequences and potentially huge liability for the energy company. 
Um, so through the use of a, si a simple inclinometer, uh -huh. um, you know, we can help to, to uh, do predictive maintenance on those assets. So that's really just the start. You know, we see this going into, you know, really helping to build, for example, the warehouse of the future. Um, you know, so I think, I think that we're starting here, but it's really just, just the beginning. Great, great. In terms of, as you said, this is more cloud agnostic. It's yeah. more API driven. So any uh, asset tracking company can leverage this uh, solution and it is more modular, right? So they can just generate APIs and take the data and put into their own cloud as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I think in a way it's very complementary to what they do because, they, you know, are, even the, the existing cloud platforms, they have that complexity too, right? They need right. to go find a location vendor, <laughs> right? They need to get stitched together a couple yeah. different things. They need to find an MVNO. You know, there's a bunch of things and, and you know, a lot, and they don't, they have to build hardware sometimes, right? right? And these are things that, you know, I think they don't necessarily want to do. So what we're doing is we're enabling them to focus on the analytics layer up top and deliver more value for their customer right. as well. Right. So I think, again, solving a lot of complexity, not yeah. just for the end customer, but also for our partners as well. And uh, talking about partners, can you tell, uh, because IoT is all about partnerships, yeah. right? And uh, what are different partners you have in your Rolodex for? Yeah, so, you know, that's the great thing here is we're not starting from scratch, right? We've been building a partner ecosystem for yeah. decades here. Um, and, you know, we launched this, uh, this platform just last week in advance of MWC. Um, and we were thrilled to have a number of, of great partners on board for the launch, you know, in a number of different areas. So, you know, some of the leading SIs in the world who will help us bring this to market through, you know, providing uh, blueprints, right? Basically, how do you roll this out and, and providing professional services to help them roll this out. Um, some of the leading cloud platforms like Microsoft was a, a leading launch partner for us. Um, we've also got a number of folks in the module space who are partners. We've got a number of folks in, in the ODM space who are partners. So that's, again, that ecosystem, that scale is really what distinguishes this platform, right? It's, it's Qualcomm leveraging all of its technology and all of its scale to help solve this problem by bringing all of these pa uh, parties to the table. Great, this is fantastic. Thank you very much, Rod. Absolutely, this was thank great you. Great conversation. Thank you thank for you being here.